Good afternoon, my friends. Welcome back. So, we're on the seventh batch of cards that we're going to review for the Monster Mirror expansion. We've got a couple of monster ones to go over from the previous batch, and then we're going to start on the Northern Realms evolving card and a couple of supporting cards for it. So, let us jump straight in. So, first of all, we've got the Monster Echo card, Ard Gaius. This is a golden special card for 10 provisions. Echo spawn frost on both enemy rows for three turns so first first instinct is it's bland and it's not too good now if you get full value with the weather it's worth 12 for 10 and you can replay it again so then another 12 for 10 possibly um it's unlikely you will get full value there's several ways to prevent uh weather ticks and we don't quite know how good it's going to be uh you've got armor you've got shields you've got clearing the weather and uh, that's probably not going to be very likely unless people take iris as the tech card because she's purify or clear weather um you've got movement to get out of the way uh or if they play early a unit might die and you don't play another unit so there's not necessarily going to get all the value you probably might miss out on one possibly two ticks but if eridan's on the board Eridin Break Glass. This means that all Frost Ticks do one extra damage. That means this is an 18 point for 10, providing it gets full value. Um, you may lose a point here and there if it kills a unit, uh, if it's the only unit on the row. But so for that reason, it's quite. It's, it seems quite necessary. Um, it's a Wild Hunt card. I don't think that has any particular bearing right now. There's no tutors for Wild Hunt cards, but. It's gold anyway, and this just is kind of like it feels necessary. And the fact is, you do want to frost in several different rounds, and this allows you to do it quite nicely. I fully expect you to be frosted for the entirety of the game, you know, almost like Ragnarok, it seems. So I'll give it a three stars for now. Although I do think that's mainly just because of how bland it is, uh, and it's really only specific in the, the single archetype. Um, it seems like it's necessary for that archetype, however. So next up, we've got the bronze monster card, Nagalfar's Taskmaster. Five strength for five provisions, so it's already moderately adequate. Um, deploy, purify an enemy unit. If you have dominance, purify any unit instead. So this is like a faction-specific pillar. Uh, and five for five is not bad uh, for purify options. You know that's that's pretty cool you know i think and you can have two of these these are faction specific bronzes you probably won't want to they are wild hunt so they will get some benefits you know with, with combo ability here so i think this is a, a really good card for monster faction devotion decks and stuff so let's give it a four stars so next up we've got the bronze monster card nagalfar's crew one strength for five provisions which is a big oof Spawned frost for two turns on an enemy row. At the end of your turn, if there's frost on the opposite row, boost south by one. So this will immediately come down as a two for five, um, and which is very vulnerable uh, to, to a lot of damage there. The frost for two turns, that's going to be worth four. Um, so it's possibly, like if it sits out for, for those two frost turns, it's going to be like seven for five. I don't think this one seems that good. I don't think we, we've seen a couple of frosts. I mean, we need all the frost we can get if you're going to play that archetype. Uh, and this is an engine, but it feels like an engine that sits sits at two as soon as you put it down. Maybe some extra boost in from you know uh, Oberon possibly or some other methods, but it sits at two, so that's pretty scary for five mana, uh, five five provisions. So I don't know. I'll give this. I'm going to give this a two. Um, it may be more necessary, but I can't say that it seems that good. Okay, so now we've got the Northern Realms evolving card and supporting cards for that particular strategy. Uh, we've got Varaxis, and this is, I believe, the King of Kerak. You can change, you can like question that if you want. But first we've got Varaxis Prince, evolving into Varaxis Outcast and Varaxis King. So, 6 strength for 11 provisions. Order, reset an allied Northern Realms unit, order ability, and then transform if in your hand and deck at the end of the round. 
Outcast has formation so you can use it straight away. Reset an allied Northern Realms you know, order you know, and give it zeal, which is pretty cool, and has devotion. And then finally, order reset an allied Northern Realms unit order ability and give it zeal. Formation veil. Whenever you play a soldier, boost it by one. So, first of all, the prince I think is pretty bad. Don't like it. Uh, it can die to certain things, especially if people really think you're going to... If these become common, people might save their six damage for this. And the fact he's an order himself is a bit oof. Um, I don't like that one. But they're always pretty bad. Maybe you can get around it with a leader charge or something if you really want to play it. Barax's outcast. Formation makes it a lot better. Um, that means that you can reset an allied Northern Realms unit's order ability straight away. Giving it zeal is a bit weird, but I guess resetting it means that for the first version of Varax's Prince, that they wouldn't get zeal, so you'd have to wait a turn as well. So you wouldn't be able to reset it and then use it. Only the second version can do that, and possibly the third version as well. Um, the second version is pretty good. I mean, if you want to use the second version, it does what it says, and, you know, it does... It's not bad. It does what it says. The third version, for Axis King, has Veil, Formation, and the same ability. Whenever you play a Soldier, boost it by one. So I really like the boosting a Soldier by one, because Soldiers in Northern Realms are really important. They're offered Engines, and plus one strength to them means they're a lot safer. Generally, they're at the tipping point where safeness is just about accomplished if you can give them one extra strength. Um, basically, on the whole, for Axis King, first version... Forgetting about that because it doesn't have zeal and it doesn't have it doesn't give zeal. It's an interesting ability. First of all, I thought it was kind of meh, but it seems like it's got some really nice potential. Uh, people say like bloody baron. Uh, you might have prince on says. Maybe you can boost that and then reset it. So it's got some really nice uh, opportunistic gameplay. Uh, find the best northern realms units with orders and then give it back. Now. It does strike me that you could use it with these engines that have orders and their engines when you don't when you haven't used the order maybe you could use the order and then give their give their order back so they start becoming engines again it seems like a lackluster option but it's there if you want it um and so i do like this guy i'm gonna give him four stars um it's a shame it doesn't like fit into any sort of particular archetype like mages and and stuff but it, it's there's a lot of orders in northern realm so i think he will fit in a lot of different archetypes you do need devotion to get this final version though but the second version is pretty damn good by itself anyway so you might just go for that so the next card that's supposed to synergize with that leader is karak city guard this is a bronze northern realms unit for three strength five provisions and she has veil Order, move an enemy unit to the other row. At the end of your turn, if order is not used, boost south by one. Um, this card is good. Really good. Um, I would say this is going to go in a lot of decks. It's an engine that boosts itself by one. So it'll instantly be four strength um, for five provisions. It can't be locked. It can't be, you know, poisoned or, or anything like that because of the veil. So... It's just really nice. Now, obviously, you want to play this in advance. You want to put it down so it's just boosting. It'll probably get removed, but, you know, you'll have a lot of engines, so not everything will get removed. Maybe you can hide it behind a defender. And then movement is actually a really nice option. It's a shame it's move an enemy unit and not move any unit, but I guess for a bronze, that'd be too powerful. So, you know, the, every, every deck generally has something which is uh, at least melee locked or range locked um so i think that be, will be very useful um and you use it i think the whole idea is that it's kind of a deterrent anyway um which is kind of cool because that keeps its boost so i do like this card i'm gonna give it four stars so next up we've got the northern realms echo card which is 12 provisions actually instead of 10 for most of the factions it's a gold of course it has echo play a northern realms unit from your deck with provision cost nine or less Boost it by one for each provision below the limit. So, um, it's got great flexibility at Tutor, which is great. It's also a Warfare card, I'm told. So that means John Natalis can pull it, so that's going to carry a lot of weight. Um, now, it can't pull the big the big cards, you know, Prince Ansai, 
the bloody baron um you know the big the big ones so we're looking at a pretty decent one now that the thing with this is that it's going to be about looking for a particular card like you can get some bronzes and then they'll get some pretty decent extra boost value from it too so you can play it quite early and uh receive the value now the tutorage is really nice the provision cost is quite high but you can also go for like a nyromancy uh this is 12 provision it's also an echo card it's neutral play any card from your deck so this is like very comparable to a nyromancy a nyromancy gets you any card um which sometimes is a bit weird because you want to do that to get your big ones this one will only get you Northern Realms cards, so no neutrals like Radaya, any scenarios, or Shoop, or anything like that. Um, and they're, they're provision cost limited to 9 or less. But you do get the boost as well, and it's a Warfare, warfare card and can be pulled with John Natalis. So I would rate this 4 stars straight out the gate. Um, obviously, for Devotion decks, this is ne needed and not a Nyromancy. I think the tutorage of this is important over a Nyromancy and it'll make a big deal um, and I think there's going to be some nice combos that you can do to keep some of your units safe um, because this boosts a little bit so I do think this is four stars and a very decent card that we'll see and Northern Rails needed it I think so good on you so our final card is Egmond four strength one armor for seven provisions Veil, Zeal, Order the Melee, damage an enemy unit by 3, at the end of your turn if Order is not used, boost a unit on the right by 1. So it is essentially a more expensive Temerian Drummer, it's one provision more expensive and for that one provision you are getting one piece of armour and Veil. Okay so it can't be locked, it can't be poisoned, it needs to be damaged or purified and locked. Um, if you use the the melee order ability is a 7 for 7 straight away, so I like the flexibility that you can do 3 damage and maybe kill something. Or you can boost the unit to the to the right by 1, drummer. Or you can use both. I really like that. That's a really cool ability. I do like this card. I'm going to give it 4 stars right now. Um, I do think it's a very good card. And not only that, it seems like movement would only affect like the melee ability so you won't be able to do the three damage at the end but you'd still get the boosting uh, which is kind of cool if they move it to the ranged row so i really like this card i think it's a very good extra drummer and that has some inherent safety now it can still die to like five strength alzor or rebuke um hopefully you've got some way to just make it a little bit safer uh, maybe a leader charge because then it gets up to six or maybe if you've got veraxis king uh, final version so it boosts all soldiers because it is a soldier that would be quite good and so you can get some extra value there and keep it safer so so far the northern rounds ones have been pretty good <laughs> weirdly enough like all four stars right because i mean i'm tempted to give one or two of them like five stars they're, they're pretty like basic cards but they seem to be powerful um they don't do anything massively game changing which is why they're not five stars but they are worth a nice chunk they're they're good options to put in decks so that is it thanks for watching take care and i'll see you again next time